While I was in Japan, I got my hands on a Japanese history textbook. But this isn't an ordinary Japanese textbook. It's a very political one. And if you look inside, you'll see a version of history that is very different than the one the world knows. An example is the Nanking Massacre. The 1938 event in which Japanese troops murdered tens of thousands of Chinese civilians. To the world, this massacre is considered one of the most infamous war crimes committed by the Japanese during their takeover of Asia. But in this textbook, it basically gets no attention. It's referred to as the Nanking Incident. And the only attention it gets in this book is basically disputing the facts. There's no mention of the hundreds of thousands of Korean women who were forcibly brought over to serve in brothels on the front lines of the Japanese wars. They're these comfort women that are a huge part of Japanese history, but they don't show up in this book. When I was in Tokyo for a border story, I actually visited the people who publish and write this book. It's this group of old Japanese men who are part of this lobbying society that basically try to push a different historical narrative into Japanese schools, and they've been quite successful. This textbook publishing society is one of many expressions of a rising nationalism in Japan. This is Makoto Sakurai. He's the public face for the Japan First Party. This group launched just a month after another right-wing faction across the Pacific Ocean took power of the White House, proclaiming a like-minded message. America first. America first. Within the first five minutes of my interview with Sakurai, and even through a translator, I could tell that this guy would get along great with Donald Trump. Sakurai's Japan First Party hasn't won any elections yet, but other nationalists in Japan have, including Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in 2012. He has surrounded himself with advisors and ministers from some of these fringe groups who are now influencing policy. Up until now, these guys, and yes, most of them are guys, have been known for driving around in their decked out vans, preaching the restoration of Japan's pre-World War II greatness. Their agenda is similar to nationalist movements in other countries. They want to restore a strong military, they call for the deportation of Koreans and a limitation to the little immigration that Japan even has. I chased after these guys and filmed them for an afternoon, watching them spar with the Tokyo police. This yearning for a return to some ill-defined golden age is the basis of many far-right nationalist movements around the globe. En réalité, on a appris à nos enfants qu'ils avaient toutes les raisons de la critiquer, de, de n'en voir que peut-être les aspects historiques les plus sombres. The main historical fixation of these nationalists is the 1860s, when Japan underwent a massive transformation, giving the emperor lots of power which he used to rapidly educate the people, grow the economy, and develop a massive military. Japan became an economic and military powerhouse in just a few years. And over the following decades, they did what powerful countries did back then. They started expanding, committing horrific atrocities like mass genocide in the process. By the mid-1900s, this aggressive expansion brought Japan into a natural alignment with Hitler's Germany, who was doing the same thing in Europe. And then, at the height of the Japanese empire, The bomb was exploded above the city, and in the towering mushroom, Japan could read its doom. The U.S. and Allied powers won the war. They came in, dismantled Japan's military, and wrote them a new constitution that ensured they'd never get so powerful again. To the nationalists, this was the moment that everything was lost. Japan was brought to its knees, stripped of the pride and national values thousands of years in the making, emasculated by these Western powers who were now occupying their country. 
1週間、たった1週間で日本の憲法を作り、そしてアホなことに日本の,その人間が70年以上にわたってこの憲法を守り続けているアメリカに逆らえないような国民を作るということでは、大成功を収めてしまったと。In Tokyo, there's this huge controversial shrine called Yasukuni. It's where all the people who died in the wars under the emperor are memorialized, including all those who died in World War II. After Japan lost the war, a huge trial was held. Thousands were convicted of war crimes and thrown into jail, and even some were hanged. And what's tricky about this very beautiful shrine that I'm walking through is that over a thousand of those war criminals are enshrined here and are prayed to every day. But a lot of Japanese people have a different narrative about what happened after the war. According to this narrative, the tribunals after World War II were not an impartial exercise of justice, but rather an emotional backlash against the atrocities that had just occurred during the war. So the fact that they're here in Yasukuni doesn't bug a lot of these people. In fact, they Revere them and they worship them for their sacrifice to the emperor. All of the symbolism and memorials point to a glorification of the imperial period, not necessarily an apology for it. The shrine is at the symbolic heart of the nationalist narrative, censoring any mention of atrocities and glorifying the imperial age as worthy of restoration. Upon leaving the shrine, I come across a right wing group that was visiting the shrine to pay tribute to the spirits. So it's tempting to draw parallels with what's happening in Japan with nationalism and what we see happening in the US and Europe with figures like Donald Trump. But while that parallel works for a little bit, it breaks down really quickly. And the differentiating factor that is the most important for understanding the difference is a word that we've heard a lot lately populism. 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 Many of these movements in the US and in Europe have been led by outsiders, populists, who want to dismantle the establishment. In Japan, that's not the case. People like Shinzo Abe are through and through establishment politicians. There isn't a disruptive figure who's coming in from the outside and winning elections. While the rise of right wing nationalism is similar between Japan and the United States and the West, it's still fundamentally quite different. And it appears that the rise of a Japanese Donald Trump is still a ways off. 